there's a paradox here about what can I do? And starting in you know, 2001, British Petroleum, with the help of Ogilvy and Mather, created the carbon footprint, idea of the carbon footprint. And this is, you could calculate your footprint, and this is what you could do, sort of making British Petroleum look like, hey, we just drill holes in the ground and make gasoline. You know, you're the ones driving, and, and so this is what you can do. And they took this out of the tobacco industry playbook. You know, you're smoking. We just make cigarettes. <laughs> you know, it's like... And, uh, and advertise and, and sell them to children. It, it was just so bizarre, but actually people care about it. And people said, okay, what can I do? And even before then, of course, but there was a great deal of so many things you can do to save the earth and, you know, these mottos and they're all good and they're all meaningful, but if you could stack them all together, they wouldn't be anywhere nearly sufficient to the task at hand. And I think most individuals realize that and could see that they should put the recycling bin out and they should use cold water in the washing machine and they should eat less meat perhaps if that was not so evident 20 years ago, but certainly now. And be careful about your clothing, how much you buy, keep it and buying secondhand clothing and you know, all that sort of stuff. There's so many things that you can do as an individual and they're very important, not only in the impact they have or don't have as the case may be, but also in terms of reminding yourself every single day that you live on a planet and can step lightly, so to speak. At the same time, I think because people knew as individuals, you know, that it was insufficient to the task at hand, then there was a tendency to say, well, are they going to do something? They were big corporates, the big government. So there was a tendency to look to these very, very large institutions as being the key, as being the ones who had the ability to make the really big changes that are needed in order to stem the climate crisis. But then if you look at those institutions, big corporates, big government, and the conference of the parties has been 25 years of, of complete disappointment, frankly. And it's not to say business hasn't made progress in certain areas, but it's been the businesses that are in the industry of re renewable energy, turbines, those companies, those engineers, those inventors, those innovators have been spectacular. But the corporations that are basically destroying the earth, that are taking the earth, that are harming life, that are degenerating life, are now paying much greater lip service to net zero in our commitments and offsets and all that sort of stuff. And so that's a big change, but up until now, there hasn't been that. And so what regeneration is about is like, wow, there's a big difference between an individual and say, you know, Procter & Gamble, or there's a, <laughs> the space in between is agency, it's us, it's groups, you know, it's cities, companies, people, it's, it's classes, it's schools, you know, it's our neighborhood, it's our communities, it's our church. There's all these ways in which human beings can figure in networks and work together, know each other, trust each other, and we'd love to solve problems together. That's why we're homo sapiens. That's why we're here. That's why the Neanderthals aren't, you know, that's because we did that and they didn't. And so we're still that way. And what we're trying to point to in regeneration is that that's where it happened. And so it starts with an individual. It does, you know, I mean, an individual talks to a friend, a neighbor, a family friend, or somebody at the company and things can grow. But those are where the solutions belong. They're all local, end of the day. You know, there's no such thing as global solutions. And who's local? Well, human beings. <laughs>